Good morning and welcome to what feels like uh, our fourth, fourth day, but is only our, our third session. We've, we've heard already um, from uh, about uh, building for the recovery and the role FinTech will play. And opening the uh, day was um, Sam and Jaffray uh, from the Dubai International Financial Center. Uh, but it gives me great pleasure to introduce our, our next panel. Um, APIs, connectivity, integration, hugely, hugely important subject area. And um, we have, uh, we're very privileged to have, uh, have five experts uh, who will, um, who will introduce themselves now. Um, we want to make this interactive as well. You'll see on the bottom of your screen the emojis so you can, uh, you can um, share your joy with our speakers. Uh, I believe that they, the panel have created a poll as well, so please get stuck in there. Uh, ask questions as well. There's, there's um, on the side panel, you can, um, you can type in a question. Um, and, um, Mostly of all, enjoy yourselves and um, and um, do get involved. And without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Stormy. Thank you very much, Stormy. Thank you, Johnny, for arranging this panel. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the panel about APIs. So my name is Shlomi, and I'm a startup solutions architect manager at AWS. AWS is a big supporter of internal and external APIs. In fact, every action you take against AWS resources is an API call. Me and my team work closely with startups on a daily basis. A lot of them are coming from the fintech industry. Great companies such as Lemonade, Stripe, Bluevine, Fundbox, and others are all using AWS to build and scale their business. So I'm very excited to be here and moderate this panel this morning. With me are four exciting entrepreneurs, and I will let them introduce themselves now. Terrell, let's start with you. Hello, everyone, and uh, my name is Tero Lappalainen. I'm the founder of uh, Bankify, and uh, I guess uh, during these uh, these times, it's good to start with uh, this kind of uh, global treat. So there are others than uh, just the pandemic, uh, like this kind of uh, economic crash, world war, or climate change or poverty, and. Uh, Basically, we at Bankify, we <coughs> believe in uh, smart decisions uh, today for better tomorrow. And I think there needs to be in world a lot of these smart decisions going uh, going forward. And uh, we believe in the courage uh, to change. And the way we do it is by making our services highly user centric and simple to use with the modern technology like APIs. and. Uh, we have last week launched our platform, which basically brings together everything that is required to build uh, sustainable finance uh, for customers. And uh, our data-driven products basically helps to take real actions towards sustainable future and go beyond this kind of measuring your carbon, uh, carbon footprint. And uh, my name is Tero Lappalainen, and I'm the founder and, uh, and the company is uh, located in Finland. And uh, before Bankify, I have been uh, building uh, over 15 years uh, like uh, success stories in the fields of fintech, online marketplace, digital marketing. And uh, that's a brief intro of myself. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tero. This is very impressive. Eran. Thank you. Hi, all. Um, I am head of open banking today. We're shifting into a, a better title, embedded financing uh, at Finastra. Finastra, for those of you who don't know, is relatively a big uh, company, we, a global company with 9,000 uh, financial institutions, almost 10,000 employees. And the, my role in the company is to take companies like <coughs> with their uh, personal financing management system and try to help them connect to the banks that we are selling software to. So in fact, we are selling software to bank for 20 and 30 years uh, from loan to payment and core banking systems. And today we're trying to um, migrate these legacy systems into a modern open API via a platform that we established named FusionFabric.Cloud. And with that, we hope to become the Apple uh, store, App Store uh, for the banks. Thank you very much, Iran. Nati. 
Thanks, uh, thanks very much, everyone. Uh, my name is Nati Shalom. I'm the uh, CTO and founder for Cloudify. Uh, previously, CTO and founder for Gigaspaces. Been working with a large bank like Morgan Stanley, TD Bank, and now City and others, uh, mostly in the area of uh, multi-cloud and uh, automation. Uh, we help those companies or those organizations and, and banks to transition from their on-prem environment into public cloud and into DevOps and cloud native. Yeah, I'm also uh, very active uh, doing thought leadership uh, around open source and banks. Uh, I'm part of the Finos, which is the financial open source organization. Uh, we've been running uh, DevOps Israel events and Cloud Native uh, Days Israel uh, type of events. So pretty much evangelizing all the open source angle, if you'd like, that uh, I'm going to discuss here also in this discussion and this panel. Thanks. Thank you very much, Nati. Yarden. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm very happy to be on this panel. My name is Yarden Pellet. I have over 20 years' experience in all the fields of uh, marketing and digital in uh, the fi financial and insurance industry. Uh, my last uh, job was head of insurance in, uh, in marketing and uh, digital in one of the largest insurance companies in Israel. Uh, and after uh, uh, been in these areas for a long time, I noticed that there are two major problems in this uh, industry, in the uh, insurance. The one is insurance products are not suitable for digital purchase. And the second one is the cost of the distribution to require a customer is very high and it's getting higher and higher. And these two points lead us to be one of the co-founders of AppFi and CI. AppFi is API for insurance ecosystem. CI I said connected insurance, and I will elaborate it, uh, what we are doing, how it can uh, succeed in the open insurance later. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. So let's get uh, the discussion started. First of all, uh, I want to say that I will leave time for questions at the end, so feel free to submit them as we go. Uh, if I will see an uh, interesting question as we go, I will pick it up and ask it during the discussion. But Let's set the stage before that. The word API is used a lot in the fintech vertical and other verticals as well. So, Nati, can you please explain to us in very simple terms what APIs actually mean? Yeah, so I think uh, API is uh, the, the simplest way to describe it. It's the English of software. It's a way in which software can talk to one another. And uh, one of the things that we know is called REST API, which is the, mon the most common one. Uh, in the cloud type of environment in which we're using uh, the protocol that we're using in our browser to communicate between backend services in the cloud and infrastructure, etc. It's the key enabler to enable the next level, which is automating everything. And the reason why we believe that the API has gone to be very popular is because of the need for automation. Uh, when we move to a cloud, everything has to be automated. We cannot really use the human interface that we previously used, like UI and, and uh, buttons and, and things of that line that you're accustomed to use in a, in a browser. And uh, it's a software to software type of interaction. And software speak, the, the, the language uh, in which software speaks is an API language. I see. So basically it's a mechanism for two softwares or two machines to communicate with each other. That's, that's great. But Terrell, maybe you can answer this one. Uh, why APRs are important, specifically for the fintech industry and in, in general? It's a really good, uh, good questions, and uh, and uh, uh, basically APIs support companies to drive uh, fast innovation and uh, to solve uh, bigger global challenges with uh, basically with smaller teams. And uh, ultimately, of course, everything working automatically, like we heard, and uh, APIs enables different players in the industry to combine forces while letting everyone to focus on what they do best. And uh, that's where the like, big potential is. And uh, that's how it enables Bankify as, as well to build the platform that brings together everything that is required for the sustainable finance and uh, end customers globally. And that's how we do uh, like uh, cooperations with uh, with players like uh, Finastra here at the, at the panel. So it's uh, it's it speeds up every, everything and uh, and so forth. Thank you. 
That's awesome. So we have business partners here in the panel, Finastro and Tero. That's great to hear. Um, so I, I see it, I guess. Uh, I understand now what are APIs and, and why do we need them. But can you tell me, I'm not coming from the fintech industry and I'm not very familiar with all the regulations. So uh, Eran, maybe you can explain to us about open banking a little bit and, and what is PSD2? Sure, sure. Um, the regulator uh, approximately three to four years ago in the UK first and in Europe uh, second, uh, decided to put the end user, the client, myself, yourself, uh, in the center. In the past, if you had uh, your bank account with, let's say, HSBC, you were only able to go into the HSBC app via mobile, via web, and to see your balances through the app. Why? Because bank is supposed to be a safe place, and the app is fully protected. Uh, protected. So the bank told you, if you want to see your balances, come to my app. The regulator said no. The owner of the account is Iran in that case. And if Iran wants to give access to Google for the sake of the example, and to see the balance through uh, Google, the bank should give access to Google. These third party providers, Google, Facebook, whoever it is, it could be also a bank, are allowed now uh, with the permission of the end user to get access. <coughs> now it may look very simple, but there are two uh, aspects that are being opened up. Access to account, meaning I want to see my balance, my transactions, and ability to pay for my account. Now that is a very big thing. Because I'll give you an example today. If I want to go to the gas station to fuel my car, and I pay from credit card, for every 100 that I pay, the uh, Kazalin station gets 98 in Israel, depends on the area, they don't get the full amount. With the fact that I can do pay for my bank account, I can move the money quicker through the bank's rail, banking rails, but also the fees are going to be uh, smaller. And this is why uh, you saw Visa acquiring Pled in the USA, and this is why uh, the credit cards company are moving uh, out from the card and plastic into uh, that area as well, because they realize how big is the potential of having that market open up. Even in Israel, the regulator is uh, aiming at open banking again to force the banks to open up with minimal, it's gradual step, uh, access to uh, account, be able to pay from account, but that eventually, hopefully, will open the entire market into a bigger competition. That is amazing. It is a big change for a bank to open up, and it is very difficult, and therefore APIs are very helpful to do that. Can you explain a little bit what, what are the benefits in opening it up? Yes. Uh, I'll give you an example from uh, real life. Google, from November, so five months ago, I believe, announced a project named Google Plex. And in Google Plex, Google is proposing in the USA only now uh, to the Google Pay clients to open a bank account without fees with a cool uh, debit card that they will issue for you. And you only need to choose one of 11 banks. Now, between us, at least myself, I don't care which bank is it from the 11 banks. Anyhow, the terms and conditions are all the same. No fees, no, 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 no. Everything is immediate and I take everything from my Google Pay. So this is my app. This is my banking app. The first and the last time that I see a bank is when I choose a bank out of the 11 uh, participants. Why is it open? And why is it important? I think that Google will give me better AI. I think that Google will give me better forecasting. I think that Google will be able to propose to me better offering because they know that I've been traveling on the weekend. They know what is it that I'm looking on Google when I'm looking for a new camera or something, and therefore they can bring the uh, most value to me. And bank? Banks remains, meaning the Google do not have a banking license. You still have to choose a bank. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of that uh, regulation is now I will go to Google and I will do my banking with Google, with their app. And that is 
you j just think about what Google can do with it. That's awesome. That, so it's a really customer centric approach with opening up the market and letting people choose and the ability to choose from different providers. Uh, I like that very much. Uh, so this regulation, open banking, is specifically for banks and, and, and the banking industry. Uh, Yarden, is there something similar for insurance? Uh, yes, I, I, I think I can. I want to start from the end. The open insurance is no closer. It's very behind the banking, open banking. Uh, and I think it has some, some several reasons. And the most common is that uh, the customer is uh, the king, the customer is in the front. And API, if we understand that it's uh, two programs that have to talk between them and put the customer ahead. Uh, and if we want to talk about open insurance, I think we need to talk first of all about data. I think everyone knows that data is a king. Everyone is talking about data. But I must remind you that in Israel, that uh, there are 14 different insurance companies and they have a lot of data. And not that there are 14 insurance companies, they can sell non-life and life uh, products. It means they have financial products, they have the PNC products, and they have the long-term products. All of this give us a lot of data. But the problem is in open insurance that uh, it's not regulated like uh, open banking. It's in the in, in the start. I know the regulator is acting very firmly towards it, and uh, I think uh, that uh, we can't uh, the legacy uh, computing of the insurance companies don't know how to manage this data. So if we don't we don't know how to manage the data, we can't use properly APIs as uh, in the open banking. Uh, I think that uh, the insurance supposed to be ahead of it and not uh, behind. They need to build an open APIs to all the products, to all the services, no matter what, no matter if some partnership is coming and asking them to build uh, an API. I will give an example later about our uh, uh, products, but I think what the API in the insurance uh, industry is trying to achieve is a few, uh, several uh, goals. First of one is uh, to increase insurance efficiency. Uh, we want to increase revenue. We want to provide the better customer experience. We talked about it before that our customers in the front. We want to grow partner channels and to get to customers that usually the insurance industry don't have the ability to, to purchase. And we want to innovate. All these uh, 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 features or goals uh, stand on the data. So I think uh, what's the goal for ins open insurance, a true open insurance using the APIs, open APIs will be to collaborate with startups, so that API startups that can give us the opportunity to work faster and to give the insurance companies, the legacy companies, to give us the opportunity to build a true open API to give the customers, uh, I think, the better customer experience that we now get from the open banking and other areas. I see. So the, the still way to go there in the open insurance. There's a long way to go there. And uh, for now, from what uh, my point of view is that we are uh, talking with all the insurance companies in Israel and uh, in the world, and we can see the difference between uh, uh, national uh, insurance companies to Israeli companies. There's a big difference of managing the data, and uh, I think uh, one of the uh, issues, and maybe Nati or Iran can talk about it, it's uh, cloud computing. I think so only now insurance are getting forward to cloud computing, and it's very helpful if you want to build an APIs and all the startups that. Uh, uh, can can benefit from the uh, cloud uh, computing. It will, I think, it will do the change for the insurance companies as it did for the bank insurance, for the open banking. Nati or Iran, you want to take this? Yeah, I usually uh, use the Netflix versus Blockbuster experience that we've seen in yeah. the media business. Uh, I think that's a good analogy on on what happens. If you look at Blockbuster, those are probably younger generation here. I'm not even sure that they know what is Blockbuster. Uh, but they used to, you know, provide you uh, videos on, on, on those stores and uh, Netflix took a different approach, which we, you know, basically moved completely into cloud. What, what that made is a change in a couple of, uh, of uh, areas that I think is relevant here. First of all, it created an infrastructure based on public cloud, but the most important thing, it enabled them to focus on the user experience, the business, and then what we've seen them working towards content uh, and, and business efficiency and uh, creating uh, application on different platforms 
all the things that are related more to the business than in the infrastructure itself. Uh, the banking industry is, is still stuck in you know, managing infrastructure and only now starts to talk about user experience and only now starts to talk about the value to the customer. How do we sell all those type of things that I think uh, we're missing, at least in the digital world. And what that transition to API and cloud will, will uh, I think will make is, is a very similar things. Banks that will realize that, uh, will be able to be the the, the Netflix. Uh, those who would not would end up being blockbuster. I think that's uh, that's the image they want to. If I just may add one thing, is this is this is I think the difference. The banking, the open banking, is the experience, and the insurance is in the infrastructure, and they still want to to you know to jump into the customer experience. And if you don't build the API correctly and the data you won't have a, a customer experience no matter what. So we're still in the infrastructure in the insurance industry. So it's setting the grounds first before you yes. learn how to walk, basically. Yes, yes. And I, I like what you said, Nati. It's, it's like the uh, the ones that disrupt the market, they will uh, uh, be the leaders of tomorrow, right? So it could be the enterprises or the banks, in your case, or either a startup that comes in and works together with those enterprises to uh, uh, bring it along. Awesome. So, so we have a lot of experience from different areas in this panel, which I really, really like. Uh, banking, insurance, the the startup angle, open source. So let me open. Let me ask you like a, a wider question, open question, and you can take it uh, uh, one panelist at a time. I want to understand how your company is using APIs today on a daily basis, and what do you think are the most interesting aspects? and the greatest promise of APIs in your field in the future. So let's start with uh, Tao. Give us the startup angle. Yes, so it was there was a good discussion on uh, on this kind of the more regulatory, regulatory point, point of view and what they, like Aaron mentioned, what the open banking is capable of uh, and uh, for us, especially this kind of uh, putting the customer in front, that, that is the like uh, main thing. And that they, of course, uh, more regulation is needed and whatnot in order to make the power to them. And, uh, and, uh, and for us, it's about uh, making uh, concrete uh, use cases out of, out of those that uh, where we solve a specific uh, customer problems by then combining these uh, APIs together and, uh, and doing the cooperation. And, uh, and therefore we place much importance, not only like, of course, making the API secure and developer friendly so that they can be taken into a use, but also then uh, the UX design part of it, that there is like uh, how, how those uh, work as well and uh, providing the value to the end, end customers because that's eventually why the APIs exist and uh, so forth. And uh, what we then uh, do best uh, is uh, responding uh, basically these uh, changing and evolving uh, end customer needs and uh, enable, enabling them to make these kind of uh, smarter financial choices and uh, making that uh, basically effortless through the automation and uh, personalized recommendations uh, towards this kind of susta towards sustainable financial wealth. And uh, one concrete use case uh, relates to smart investment so now what did uh, this kind of uh, api economy makes it uh, makes it possible so we can already like uh, personalize uh, like uh, end customer journey and recommend uh, this kind of uh, good uh, financial choices for regarding investments and uh, which are also like uh, good for the environment and uh, and then on top of that, uh, we can make uh, seamless the money movement uh, with uh, like uh, doing like uh, payments with uh, with open open banking and even automate uh, the transaction so that you can while doing uh, like normal transactions on a daily basis that you can put uh, saving rules uh, towards that investments which pile up the wealth uh, for that individual and it's really 
important uh, that we increase the wealth of people and that will uh, like uh, bring uh, value on a global scale uh, in uh, in every part of the world with uh, and uh, creating uh, more peace more wealth and uh, in uh, in the world so that's uh, bankify's angle to tackling bigger challenges and uh, so forth it's awesome so basically personalized experience and, and making a better world Yes, that's what APIs will bring us. That's, that's great. what APIs will bring us. That's it's already here, and what will be the future? It's uh... yeah. So let, let's hear it from uh, uh, one of your partners that you collaborate with, Iran. What what do you think of that? And where do you use APIs on on a daily basis in your product? What we do today, we we are taking, and it's a journey, and it's complicated. We're taking all of our legacy systems and rewrite their internal native APIs that were written 30 years ago into public modern API. And this is tough. This is difficult. This is not an easy save as JSON and you're good because of the fact that the way that the uh, FinTech is expecting to get it is entirely different, more, uh, you know, simple than the native API was written. And uh, the journey is, is tough, long, and this is what we do on a daily basis. We go to all of our divisions, to all of our products, and rewrite internal APIs into public APIs. Why we prioritize the work by companies like Bankify that are telling us we can do that. And for that, we need this type of APIs. And we go and we prioritize the work according to what we hear as a need. One thing that we realize, and banks as well, they will not compete with uh, Google, right? They will lose if they try to compete with Google and therefore they better be on the list of 11 banks than not being there at all. We finance from, we understand that and we try to, to be there for, for the banks. We try to be there for the bankifies uh, of the world because we believe that even us as a big technology provider, we cannot compete with bankify. So we rather partner with bankify, enable their business and do some kind of a rev share with them than to try to build ourselves all the apps in the world and try to keep up the pace with this crazy fintech industry, which is of course blooming. And and fintech are all, always smarter than the banks and therefore the banks should hug the fintech. We hope and we believe that uh, we are uh, in a position to do that. Even our slogan at the company today is the uh, financial, uh, uh, business is open. We really try to open it up. I think you touched a very interesting point. We, we talk about modernization all the time and innovation, but taking all this legacy code and old system and actually modernizing them and building APIs for them, it's a very tough process and it takes a lot of time. And I think this is why the, the big enterprises or the companies with a lot of legacy code are, are a little reluctant to get into it because they know how much effort they will need to put into it. Uh, yeah, then I want to hear your take from the uh, insurtech industry. Yeah. What do you think? I think uh, you, you had the, the right point, and I think the insurance industry, let's say, for example, what I want from uh, the insurance company API and why they are not uh, putting all the effort, like you said, it's a bigger problem and they don't know how to involve it. But I think I want the customer experience to be automatically complete ID check. It doesn't need to put uh, any any personal uh, details, it's not, doesn't supposed to be like this. Automatically filling data required. I don't know why there are still fields in insurance that I have to fill everything. It's like a long journey that nobody wants to do anymore. I want to create a complete picture of the customer lifestyle because today, I'm not all the data that we have is not aimed and it's not settled and tailored made for the customer experience based on all the data that uh, companies can uh, collect. So. All of, all of this give us, uh, you know, the, the very start of the open uh, insurance. And uh, I think if I can give you an example from our daily life, like uh, you said before, we're trying to, to get uh, an API with the insurance company, let's say for insurance uh, travel, uh, insur travel insurance. We have, uh, uh, what we do in CI is we collect the data and we are only the buffer between the insurance company and the third party partnerships that so they can distribute all the insurance uh, 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 products. So let's say if we take the insurance, the travel insurance, we have a, a, 
in Israeli airlines that wants to sell our products and insurance uh, travel. And uh, if we had an, already an API, you must understand that every customer of this airline that goes to direct and the digital purchase of his ticket or his vacation can have in one click the travel insurance and it can be activated automatically by GPS and you can use and all this data to give him information along before the travel in the, tra in, in the terminal and when he's getting to the other uh, countries that he wants to have his vacation. And now we can do it. We need to get leads, we need to get into a landing page and we need to give him uh, all these customer journeys that he doesn't want to have in the insurance instead of giving him through API. And this is why I think all the insurance companies must build their APIs and not wait for the opportunities. They don't have to wait for the third partnerships that will tell him, I need, like you said, Iran, I need this, this, and this from the bank and I will to do it. And now I have to convince them that if you give me this, this, and this data, I can give you a better experience. I can give you a personalized, uh, 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 personalized, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's varying and uh, the, the specific uh, uh, amount to pay for the tickets and for the insurance. And this is something that is still not going on in the uh, insurance uh, area. Another example, very short, it's a cyber insurance. If you want uh, to sell, it's not selling, no one sells insurance, uh, cyber insurance, because it's very complicated. Through APIs, you can understand that we can uh, give the insurance companies a low risk, a very experienced a customer experience, and in one click, and we can uh, be connected to the customer. We can give them now a prevention and uh, from cyber attacks very connected 24 seven, and you don't have to call by phone to a TPA or to another to our uh, insurance agents agents to uh, to claim. So I think all this API, if we will have it in the insurance uh, companies, will lead us through the way to the experience, customer experience, and give us a lot of of uh, opportunities. Thank you, thank you, Erden. That's uh, uh, very insightful. Uh, Nati, for someone that's coming from open source and from uh, Cloudify that I guess using uh, uh, APIs uh, intensively, I, I think you, you can shed a bit more light to this discussion of the greatest yeah, uh, promise, like actually, to... if, you can, if you can focus on that. What is the greatest promise in APIs? Yeah, so I think uh, APIs and open APIs uh, goes alongside with open source and, and I think uh, openness in general. Uh, I wanted to share maybe my personal experience uh, over the last decade. Uh, when when I started to work with, you know, the Morgan Stanley, the JP Morgan, those big, large investment bank, infrastructure and API was kind of done behind closed doors and it was very secretive. And uh, the only way in which bank collaborated is that, you know, Goldman took JP Morgan team and, and have them uh, running their data center. And, and as someone from the outside, uh, everyone was kind of reinventing the wheel all the time, just copycatting what others were doing. And uh, and at the end of the day, the cost burden was for us as customers, because when the cost of infrastructure is pretty high, when they need to invest a lot of time, we pay double. One, in the user experience, and second, that cost at the end of the day, the bank don't want to lose money, so they obviously uh, throw that cost at us uh, in, the, in the cost of service. And what I'm seeing right now, uh, and I'm part of the Finos organization, which is kind of uh, amazing to me. Uh, right now, you can see JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, all sitting in the same room, discussing how to open their API, how to open an infrastructure. In addition to that, they're also discussing with the cloud providers like yourself, like Google, like others, what do they need from the cloud providers infrastructure in order that they will be able to uh, transition into those clouds. So I think the the main challenge that I see is that banks already realize that 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 need to transition, but they have a lot of challenge on how actually how to move from where they are today into this new world, and 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 that's where the open API, the open source, this open community and open mentality is key. It's not a it's not an optional. It's a it's a necessity. If you don't do it, you're gonna die. And that's very different than I think the previous wave of you know decade ago where it was mostly driven by efficiency. Meaning that if you don't do it, you're probably going to pay more cost, uh, but you could still run the business the way you are. 
today we're at the point in which it's driven by necessity. If you don't do it, you're going to die. And that's why we're going to see much more investment and much more aggressive plans towards it. And I see uh, whose name is Sho uh, Shoham, Shoham Ben uh, Ruby is asking a question whether the uh, the banking uh, regulators will do to that question is that when there is a big <laughs> customer demand, I think we're we lost Nati a little bit. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right at the most interesting part, I think. So, <laughs> damn technology. Um, but you know what? Let's wait a few seconds. Maybe you'll come back. So, for now, let's take uh, the question from the audience. If someone else wants to answer it. So, I, I, oh, sorry. Shaw, I'm asked. What do you think, where, where, what's the future of the regulation in, in Israel of open banking? And if someone or some entity uh, <laughs> is going to block it? So who wants to take this? Yes, Tero from Bankify here. Can I like uh, say a few words uh, in, the, in the beginning regarding that? So how, how I see like uh, at, at the moment is uh, no matter if it's uh, PSD to GDP or, or whatnot regulation, open banking, it's, I, I think we are like uh, in, in the Europe, we are a little bit uh, in that sense behind. So we need, needed to do this, uh, this kind of regulation. And it's, uh, of course, those who ha hasn't like uh, set any, any, any rules and regulations yet, I think they have a bit like advantage in that sense that they can make it even better, even like uh, faster because it drives the innovation and, uh, and creates the prosperity in the country. So I would say that it's just a ma matter of uh, how fast you want to innovate and uh, so it's just uh, do you want to create wealth uh, in, in those countries that uh, making uh, making the data available that this kind of uh, the small, smaller and uh, and the teams can make bigger things in country and uh, so forth. So I see that's just a matter of uh, in that sense time. Oh, Nati is back. Nati, we're discussing the question from Shoham. If you want to finish your your sentence there, because we lost you. Yep. Sorry about that. So, so I think the question again, uh, the analogy that I made is uh, what happens in the telco business and the mobile business. And we've seen how uh, the pressure from consumers uh, made the regulators change the rules quite aggressively towards that. I think there is enough critical mass here in terms of the need for change uh, that I don't think the regulators will be able to stop it. And we see also uh, a new uh, uh, kind of a online banking only thing uh, by the founders of Mobili uh, that is going to be launched here. And, uh, and the main driver for changes is competition. And that competition is already happening in Israel. Uh, so if I look at all that, I don't see that stopping anywhere. And the banks already realize that. And I think we're beyond that point. OK. Um, I don't see any other questions in the feed. If you have any question, please submit it. So maybe we'll do another one for now. Uh, Iran, where, where do you see What's the future of APIs? What needs to be done to improve if it's the infrastructure or the collaboration between the entities? Where, where are we heading in five years time? Where do we see APIs go? So I'm not very optimistic with the future of APIs as is. I think that uh, this is like plumbing. If I do an analogy to a house, these are bricks and building blocks, but not the entire compound, not the entire house. Yes. I do believe that the dialogue is going to change to value proposition, to use cases, to persona, and uh, it is changing and shifting from usage of API to a whole solution. Actually, the winners are going to be those who are able to prove a full value end-to-end -to, -end to a client. And if that wouldn't change, then uh, it wouldn't work. I can tell you, I can see no deal is a, it's a big uh, Nordic bank. They had the open banking from from very early stage, more than five years ago, really ahead of the game. And they kept on saying, we will monetize it, we will do a lot uh, with it, and they didn't. They did not deliver, not because of them, because of the fact that API in itself is, is just an API. Get account is, is nothing. Okay, I have the account. What do I do now? If I don't bring a value proposition end-to-end, right. -end, 
then I bring nothing. And I do believe that the uh, shift in five years is going to be from APIs to use cases, and banks will do something that we call today banking as a service or uh, embedded financing, which is, here is my license as a bank, go and do something with it, I don't care. I give you my license, it's my responsibility, my regulators and everything, but here is the business for you. You wanna do payout globally? You wanna do lending globally? No problem. I am a lender, here is an API or a set of API or a use case, go ahead, whatever company you are, and do your lending. We already see something like it starting to build up in Israel with the collaboration between Shufersal and Rami Levy, and the Discount Bank, uh, and uh, their, uh, I forgot the name of the app, but the, mob, the wallet, which is exactly that. This is the direction. Yes. Remember, Rami Levy holds, it's a retailer for all of the foreigners, uh, he holds a million clients. He knows them, when they come, what they buy, when do they split the bill, and he can give them additional value-added services, sometimes better than a bank, just right. because of the yeah. footprint. So APIs the footprint. are just the tools, basically. Yeah. APIs are the tools, they're not enough to bring value to the Exactly, customers. it's embedded I, I, I I banking as a uh, we, need to, uh, we need to wrap up, I'm afraid. We're wrapping up. One so sentence from me, I think, I think it's very yes. right. The new distribution platform by third partnerships will be the one, the use case that this industry needs and the API needs. So I agree with you. Uh, Johnny, uh, you're a party pooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for well. a very lively discussion. Thank you, Johnny, for having us. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. All. My pleasure. That was, uh, that was fascinating. Thank you very much, guys, for sharing your, your insights. Thoroughly, thoroughly uh, enjoyable. Um, Please show your appreciation um, and give a, a virtual round of applause. You can you can click on the emojis at the bottom as well. Um, 